Thanksgiving of 2012 with a notice of preparation. That's the formal notice that lets you all and state agencies and other local agencies know that we're going to be preparing an EIR on the project. We then went about preparing the draft EIR in, uh, earlier in this year, and then we distributed uh, the notice of availability and the draft EIR uh, back on May 1st. Uh, you can see where the little arrow is here. This is where we are tonight at the public hearing on the draft EIR. Yes, sir. How was it distributed? Because I'm a neighbor. You guys, you, you are anticipating my, my uh, slides almost perfectly. Uh, that will literally be the next or the next slide after that. Let me tie with uh, something to talk about on that, on that point. Uh, and so then just to point out that June 17th is the close for all of the uh, comments. Two or three more uh, process points here, and then I'll talk about distribution of notices. Uh, we then, after we get all of your comments after next Monday, uh, spend oh, maybe a month or six weeks uh, preparing responses to all of those comments and questions. Uh, we then also prepare what is called a mitigation monitoring and reporting program. Uh, this is the answer to the question that was raised last time about how do how can we as neighbors or as uh, parents of students be sure that all of the mitigation measures that you all recommend in your document actually get carried out? How do we know if they're going to do all the stuff that you tell them to do? Well, this mitigation monitoring and reporting program uh, is that document, and it says what has to be done by when and who has to do it and what happens if it doesn't get done. Lastly then, uh, or second to last, the uh, certification of the final EIR, which is the draft, which is out there circulating these days, along with our responses, that's referred to as the final EIR, and, and the school board then decides to certify, or not certify, uh, that document. Only then can they consider the project and move forward with it. The notice of availability of the draft EIR then was mailed to, or posted, in the following sorts of locations. At that, I understand from Mitchell, uh, to all uh, property owners in the Graymont Circle neighborhood, the county clerk's office uh, posted here on the project site, on the district website, and then notices published in Contra Costa Times as well. Yes, ma'am.
distribution just one moment, uh, of the draft EIR in paper form. It went uh, to two different state of California agencies who are the regulators that might have an interest in this project. That would be Council, uh, State Department of Transportation, California, as well as the State Department of Toxic Substances Control, DTSC. Uh, copies were also made available at the school district main office, at the high school office here, at the public library, uh, Concord City Hall, and there were links on the uh, website. Now, ma'am, did you have? Yeah, you said that uh, on the MND there would be no response to that. But last November we were notified that we were to respond to the draft EIR and we sent letters at that point in time and we never received any responses then. What you're referring so we to will get responses to both that and to this? What you're referring to, I believe, would be the uh, comments that you might have wanted to offer on the notice of preparation. That's uh, right. The document that, that announced that we would be preparing yeah. the EIR. So yeah, we took all of those comments in, and I've forgotten how many letters there were, but um, do a dozen or more. Um, and those are actually found uh, as Appendix A in this current draft EIR, which was on the contact disk in the back of the document. And those informed the work that we did. But we, but we don't, other than uh, responding by doing a document that addresses those questions, uh, we don't do any further responding to those comments. Yeah, but there was, there was no response to those. That, that's my point, ma'am. In uh, November. Th th there was no response to them. We took them in, and what we do is to <coughs> use them in creating this current document. I oh, see. Okay. So that helps us figure out what, I mean, I gotta tell you, we had a pretty good sense of what people were concerned about in terms of topics and methods and things like that. But nevertheless, I recall yeah, reading those worse. and seeing there were a yeah, few, it, yeah. um, uh, you know, uh, uh, what you call nuances or uh, things which we hadn't yet seen before. So they were useful to us. Okay. okay. Figuring out what to do. So the preparers of the document, um, ourselves at LSA and a number of our technical experts include people like traffic engineers, air quality and climate change analysts, noise analysts, biologists, etc. You can see the rest of the folks here. The draft, for those of you who haven't read the draft EIR, I just wanted to uh, basically post an outline of what the document itself looks like. It includes an introduction, which gives some background about the earlier project and this project. Uh, it also summarizes everything. So if you wanted to just see what our findings were about impacts and mitigations, you can go to the summary chapter. There's a much more detailed than I have said here tonight. Uh, project description and with graphics and uh, maps and things. Then the meat of that analysis is the setting impacts and mitigation measures section. There's a chapter on alternatives. There are some what we refer to as CEQA required conclusions. Uh, there's a report preparation and a bibliography. And then as I say, the technical appendices are on a CD tucked into the back of the document. And that's where some of the technical As a result of the new initial study that is included in this document as Appendix B, which helped us focus down what issues to look at in detail in the EIR, we came up with these five topics. And so in the draft EIR, you will find detailed analyses of these five topics. The other topics were simply handled by the initial study. And so, for example, questions about minerals or forestry or those kind of things didn't require full analysis in the main text of the EIR. These are the issues that, that uh, we spent the most time with. <laughs> one of the questions which often comes up, and it's a good one and a, a complicated one, has to do with how we determine if something is significant. Um, air quotes around that word. Um, and the way that we do that, in other words, you know, what's significant to one person might be not to somebody else. Uh, so we need to have standards. We need to be able to actually say what is or isn't significant. And so what we end up doing is starting off by establishing a significance threshold, sometimes called a significance criterion, for every single topic that we're looking at. In the case of this project, the district did a good thing and has from the very beginning done the right thing by adopting and allowing us to use the City of Concord's standards. Some agencies might decide to have their own standards, which are not as strict. What the district did was to use the cities, and in a few cases, we're required to use state agencies or other people who are the experts on given topics. 